shut up and stop talking so much. The words my mother used to say to me right after she would slap me in the mouth. I grew up being afraid to speak because I didn't want to be disruptive. I didn't want to be told to shut up. And I didn't want to get in trouble. One day, I was at my after school program. And there was a teenage boy. He pushed me on the wall. He put his hands underneath my skirt. I felt alone in those moments. None of the staff was paying attention. I was too afraid to tell. But the next day, I went to school and I told my friend what happened to me. The next thing I know, I was told to go to the front office because it was urgent. When I got there, it was the school counseling counselor and my mama. I could tell on my mom's face that she was so upset that I had put white folks in her business. When I got home, my mom told me, you're gonna be on punishment for four days for not telling me. That was the moment that I was afraid to speak, to say anything, to get in trouble. But college was a special place. I couldn't wait to go to Florida State University. It was the time that I thought that we could be critical thinkers and that I would not be disciplined anymore. So I thought. One day in my sociology class, we were talking about race, class, and gender, and I couldn't wait to get there because I had read all the literature. I love to read, and I love to debate. And I got there, and I was saying everything that I wanted to say, telling my teacher, I don't really like that part of the book, and I don't really like that part of the book. And then after class, I was expected to be embraced by the black girls in class. Instead, they walked out of class together without me, and I overheard them say, she's so annoying. She always got something to say. She always raising her hand. I felt small. I felt like I shouldn't say anything anymore. It's already hard enough to go to a PWI. It's even harder being there with our black girls as your friends. But that wasn't it. The last semester of sociology class, I got a, my first black female professor. It was a black feminist class, my first feminist class, to be frank. We were learning about the ways that black women were written in literature. And after class, I told my professor, I don't like the literature. The way that we write about larger black women isn't their real stories. The only thing we say is, they're mammies. Well, you know what? Our stories are more complex than that. And she told me to go home and write what I thought was not in the book. So I went home and I wrote everything that was missing. I wrote about romantic experiences. I wrote about medical experience. I mean, I wrote the longest paper I had ever written in life. And you know what she said to me when I brought it back to class? I was afraid that she was going to discipline me. But what she said was, that was groundbreaking and keep writing. I thought writing was going to heal me, but it didn't. There was something else going on. I couldn't control my emotions. I would burst out into tears. I would lash out at people when they said things I didn't like. So I decided to go to therapy. Another black woman helped me out. My therapist was a black woman, and I was expecting her to diagnose me with some kind of mental illness and give me medication. After I had told her everything that had happened to me, I just knew I was gonna be on medication. And you know what she said? She looked me in the eyes, I looked her in the eyes, and she said, you have complex PTSD. I sank in my chair, because I just knew 
life was over. I was never going to be able to have joy. I was never going to have a good life. I was broken. And you know what she said? Girl, you just need to keep talking. It's healing you. Someone asked me a question one day. They said, what would you do if money wasn't an issue? I said, I would help change the world. And they said, you can do that now. And then I responded, no, I can. Started a little debate. But you know, deep down inside, I knew that I can make a change. So I started. I began to use my own money to fly all over the country, talking about the social, political, and economic impacts of beauty. I mean, I talked to physicians, I talked to medical providers, I talked to, uh, I went to workshops, I was talking on social media, I mean, I went everywhere talking about the harms. Even though I was talking about the harmful impacts of beauty, it was healing me on the inside. That journey helped me to become unfiltered. I was no longer afraid to be so told to shut up and stop talking so much. I was no longer afraid to be told she is so annoying. I became unfiltered. Now I have a question for you today. Who are you holding back from becoming unfiltered? Thank you.